Central bankers are determined to never have a recession again. They see recessions as a bad thing, which tells me, as somebody who's been involved with the highest levels of Fortune 100 company strategies and many, many new ventures and small businesses on the innovative end, failure is the secret to the free market capitalism. So yes, you have to have the freedom to innovate new companies to grow and, and not be over controlled and all this sort of stuff, but you also have to let failures get cleared out, okay? And that's what they're not doing. When, when 2008 hit, and, and by the way, I predicted that decades before it happened. Late 2007 was due to be the peak of the entire baby boom, massive spending wave as they got older into their peak spending from 1982 to 2007. And when that hit in 2008 and early 2009, and they saw how bad the economy got, they just panicked and started printing money. And they thought, oh my gosh, you know, $1 trillion ought to get this economy back jolting and going. Well, it didn't. And, and now they've printed the eight, eight trillion dollars many, many years later, 14, 15 years of stimulus. I actually count $27.2 trillion, 9 trillion money printing, 18 trillion, um, you know, uh, basically deficits by the government. I mean, and you don't usually run deficits every year, especially in boom time. So they, they have fought a downturn with stimulus that nobody would have dreamed of. I, I admit, no, I didn't see 27 trillion in stimulus to stop this trend. Anybody with the least bit of common sense would say, if you keep taking the easy way out and just printing money and just having the government spend more than they take in and worrying about the rising debts, and, and now we have the highest debt ratios, public and private, and the private is three times the public. I'm not even worried about the government and them defaulting. I'm worried about the private debt, which is three times the government debt. So this is something that has to come back into balance at some point. I and anybody else has died a million times trying to predict this because they are, I mean, here's the thing. Once you start playing this game and keep stimulating, I mean, here, here's my thing. Here's where I, I'd give this, the Fed the greatest criticism. They had a chance in COVID to let the economy take a break for a good reason. Nobody would say there's something wrong with the Fed or the economy if we have a minor recession or something because of COVID, because people can't go out and spend money and can't congregate and socialize and all these things. But no, they doubled down and, and, and $10 trillion of deficits in, in two and a half years. $10 trillion, the biggest stimulus ever. And that's why we're still going. That If you have stimulus like this, you have to lag it for a year to year and a half. So this stimulus is just starting to peak and wear off. And now, because they went so far in loosening, they finally did. And, and this was the mistake, going so far with overreacting with stimulus to COVID that they had, they created 9% inflation literally overnight, okay? And then they had to go and tighten 525 basis points and they may still have to throw in another quarter. That's the biggest tightening since the early 80s, which led to the biggest recession back then since the Great Depression. And I think this, you have to say, you can't say this hasn't hit. It's going to take to the end of next year before we see, end of this year, I'm sorry, 2024, before we see how much it hits. But yes, am I humbled? Yes. I mean, have, have they been able to keep this ridiculous, overstimulated economy going? But is that good? Would, would, I mean... Is it good that somebody keep taking crack to get high or, or keep, or the answer they say, what's the problem when you have a hangover drinking? Drink more. That's what we've been doing, basically. And I, I sorry, I call that bad policy and there will be consequences. And if there is not in the next year, year and a half, I, I'm probably just going to quit my profession, you know, because this has gone on so long. If they really can keep a boom going this long with no consequences, then it's really true. Why are we working? Why are we investing, taking risks when all they have to do is print money and we keep going? So if that's the truth, then okay, fine. Really, people shouldn't be listening to me. A year to year and a half before you know how much that stimulus is going to hit. So we won't know until the second half of this year whether we're going to be able to get through this and 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 that the the tightening was not too much. Okay. We won't know that till then. And the problem is by then things could be happening very fast. Bubbles don't have soft. Uh, there's no soft landings really in history. Okay. Uh, of any consequence. Bubbles, particularly 
only crash because they, they go to such extremes by nature when people are just investing in things because they're going up and they keep doing more and more. When it crashes, it's hard to stop those crashes once they get enough momentum. So what I'm really looking for, and I really will kind of shut up and back off if we don't see this this year. I am looking for a next wave down in stocks to gain some momentum and it gains enough momentum once we hit a new low. And the magic number is 10,088 in the NASDAQ. If we break down through that, then we're in another big wave down. And I think that wave's going to have more momentum than the first and go a lot lower. And then we see what investors think. Then we see if people don't start panicking, slow down on their spending and house buying and get scared of owning stocks. I mean, because right now you have to admit, I mean, what the belief is right now, the Fed will not let the economy or the stock market go down very much for very long. So there's no big risk. Well, well, first of all, that's bad. That means people have no discrimination if they think you can just throw money in the economy. And by the way, that's what the central banks are doing. They're just throwing money into the economy with no discrimination, just throwing it in, printing it, throwing it in by buying their own treasury bonds, okay, which they're issuing at record rates, but they can push interest and pushing interest rates down to well below what the market rates would be and think there's no consequences. So we'll see. But but at this point, given how far they went on the stimulus side, which I didn't open the thought they'd have gone that far, okay? But once they do, we don't know how the tightening, now that they've gone the other way, 525 basis points, that, again, that is the biggest tightening, uh, only, only rivaled by 1980-81 in, in history. In history, if that doesn't affect by the end of this year when it should fully hit, then I'd say, yeah, well, they, they've created a magic wand here. What am I doing poo-pooing this, this wonderful innovation? We did see a, a, a steep crash, 38% in the NASDAQ, 28% in the S&P in 2022. That is totally consistent with the first wave right. major crashes like 29 to 32 throughout history. So uh, only then did I say, oh, now it finally looks like the crash has started after they pushed it back. Nothing needs to happen. All that needs to happen is to continue to play out the, the past massive $10 trillion in two years stimulus. You know how big that is? That has not even remotely ever happened any time in history as a percentage of the economy just to keep you know, this, this, this crashing train going, okay? It, you know, that is going to hit increasingly into mid to late this year. That's what we see. The old stimulus has to wear off. That's peaking already, and that's going to start to go down. But And the new tightening is going to hit at the same time all in 2024. So unless you apply these lags, you can't make sense out of this. And, and so these lags will be able to fully work out the fading of the old stimulus, which was massive, and the the full impact of the new, new tightening, which was also massive. Both of those will hit by the end of this year. And then we'll know. Until then, I don't care what I've said in the past. I don't care what anybody said. It, it, what I see, I would not have my money sitting in, in large cap stocks right now, hoping for the best. If you want to short, if you want to go long this market, you want to sit in stocks, be my guest. Anybody in this audience, be my guest. I'm telling you, I and anybody intelligent I know is not doing it because you can't keep going a bubble forever. There are people addicted to heroin that they can get massive toxicity until they finally fall over and hit the pavement and end up in the emergency ward, okay? There, there's people that can go longer. This economy's gone longer than it should have. The stimulus has been heroic, but they did tighten. So I'm now that they finally were forced to tighten, and again, they didn't have to over-respond to COVID. So they made, that was a big mistake. Even if you're going to be a stimulus policy and you're, you're going to say, we're not going to have a recession no matter what. So we're going to accommodate the economy to overreact to COVID that much was a big mistake. And so until this whole thing plays out, again, old stimulus wears off, which is happening now, I'd say right about now, into the end of this year, and the new stimulus finally that they've already put in back in July if it will hit by the end of this year. The end of this year is when we can judge. I'd rather be on the sidelines judging this because if we do have a crash, the market's gonna go down mm -hmm. way. I'll promise you this. If we do have a continued boom this year versus a crash, the crash will happen way faster and harder than the boom because the boom's already so stretched. The crash has been prevented heroically by central banks, which to me is bad business. If you say you believe in free market capitalism, that means you let them, the capitalists and the markets make the decisions and you don't force it to grow. Force the economy to grow for 14 years.
The economy suddenly starts to slow for no obvious reason. Consumers have spent and keep borrowing and keep getting a, a new loan to improve their house and all that stuff until there's nothing to improve and their kids have left and they don't even need the damn house they have, okay? That's a lot of people are in that mode, okay? So, so spending, the economy has to weaken and respond to this tightening. And I'm expecting, the only difference between anybody would expect this tightening to have some effect. I'm saying since they put off this tightening so long, and then when they finally tighten, they tighten hard. I'm expecting, they're thinking the economy can take it and it won't be a big deal. I think the economy can't take it. That's the difference. First wave took us down 38% in the NASDAQ, 28% in the S&P 500, okay? Now we've had this bounce back to new highs and a few, but look, here's a classic thing for stock analysts. When you only see the generals make new highs and all the troops don't, that's a called a huge divergence and a sign you're going to see another downturn. So the next wave, if, if I'm correct, the next wave would have to go lower than the first wave and from near highs in some indexes, not in the small cap and stuff. And that would end up having the stock markets, let's say by the end of 2024, down 50 to 60 percent instead of the 38 and 28. OK, so that's what that would be the sign. OK, yeah, no, they weren't be able to prevent this crisis. The stock markets are reasserting themselves, saying, hey, something's rotten in Denmark. That would be the middle wave down and every major crash in history has had three waves down and the last wave would follow that. But most of the damage should be done in this next wave and it should happen this year. Otherwise, we really do have a bubble and a non-burst for the first time in history. And I don't think anybody knows what to make of that. If we're stocks from the top, and it's different and different, and yeah, we'll be down 50 to 60% and still have made one more wave to go after that. But that, that would be the sign that despite all this stimulus, and because they finally were forced to tighten, that the markets got there. I'm just telling you, I know the market. The markets don't want this, okay? So the markets are forced to being forced to take more and more crack and get more out of whack and not rebalance themselves. The markets are great at growing and expanding and great at quickly. That's the secret to free markets. That's why George Gilder is my famous traditional economist. He says, yeah, you have to have the freedom to grow, but you have to have the freedom to fail. What we've been preventing since 2008, we're not allowing failure because they're scared failure will cause the whole castle to come down. And the truth is, it will after a bubble and this record debt in all sectors, government, business, consumer, and financial sectors, all record debts beyond anything. You can't even compare this to the 1929 in the roaring 20s bubble. Can't even compare this. Way more global and it's and it is an everything bubble. There's almost nothing that hasn't bubbled.